wondering how that worked. Why can't I? Is there a, an Is error up in the background? I think it might have. I think it might have. Oh, oh look at that! Oh, wait a hey, minute. Hey. This is a new one. I think this is a new one. Oh, error. I'm not, not, video not receiving enough video. Man, the island internet sucks! <laughs> I can't tell you how many times this has happened where, I, I mean, like, guys, I just spent like an hour setting up everything, getting all the video, <laughs> and I've got so much stuff to show you, so much cool stuff. I've got uh, drone footage of the lagoon under sail, uh, drone footage of Too Short, which is the lagoon, uh, leopard boat that I'm on. Um, some some footage from this morning where the, it was the wind reversal was really bad and was going crazy. We got lucky yesterday. Our stream went pretty well. Yeah, I'm surprised. I think it's just the weather. Thanks, Elsa. <laughs> and we're back. Ah, right on. Okay, so it says, look, listen up. It's I'm getting an error message in yellow. This is the first time I've ever seen that. Actually, it said yeah. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain maintain smooth streaming. So we're gonna keep going, and maybe it'll work. I think what happens is the video stops first and the audio just keeps going. So you guys can hear my voice, our voices, yeah, yeah. and oh. we'll just keep it going. So look, I'm going to try to show you guys uh, a little bit of video of Too Short and the current situation and the situation this morning. Because with this hurricane, it was pretty gnarly this morning. I mean, I woke up, what time did you guys wake up? Like 7, 7.30? Six. And it was... I was up at like 4 a.m. Four? I, that's been like a recent thing for me. I don't know why. I just started waking up at like 3 or 4 in the it, morning. It did start... Not, nothing to do with the storm. I just... I don't it did get start it. At I wake up at 4 too. I freaking hate it. <laughs> My body just wakes me up at 4. I don't wake up at 4. Okay, so... Um, let's see. This is the tropical wave. It, okay, so here's the, two, here's the drone shot of your boat. Which is epic, by the way. Your boat is sick, dude. This is a Leopard 46. Leopard 46. Catamaran. Uh, it's an owner's version. It's a really nice boat. So it's got three cabins, and one hull is dedicated to the owners. So they have a big shower. <laughs> I mean, like a big shower. In it's the all front. about the shower. Yeah, it is. And the in leg room when you're sitting yeah. on the toilet, man. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> you got to be able to spread out. <laughs> Well, um, when we were shopping for boats, he had to test to see if he could even shut the bathroom did door. You, did you take a poo on the boat when you, t when you were testing? Yeah, yeah. It was like the first thing I did. did I did. And I'm like, I got to use the bathroom That'd be now. That'd so funny. <laughs> oh, th sir, this is a boat show. The boat is on the hard right now. Ooh, sorry. You're going to want somebody to come in here and clean that up. Yeah. Didn't realize. Um, yeah, so that's too short. Uh, the the, <laughs> the uh, seagulls started attacking the drone, so we had to just... <laughs> get it in and actually you landed the drone right on your solar panels he just flew the drone right onto his solar panels shut him off no cut fingers no almost loss of life or eye or limb yeah, no it's like we've got a built-in landing pad here. i've we, never we have seen a anybody do that i've never seen anybody do that. Our, our our boat has a heli pad i could advertise it that way if we ever sell it that's kind of cool or like so, a yeah. droney pad droney <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that's like a pad. cute girl way to say it <laughs> <laughs> it's a droney pad <laughs> Uh, so this is actually the video that these guys took of their, from their boat this morning. You guys didn't hear this, so we got to shut up now because... It's kind of nasty out. Kind of nasty. So we added a second set of uh, lines for uh, our mooring. And uh, what I like to do when it's really nasty, if we're on a mooring ball, is uh, I wrap the line around the cross beam instead of just relying on the cleat. It has the the force on the uh, on the cleat. So, okay, here. Got this line just wrapped around wrapped around the uh, the cross beam here. So, almost definitely helps. It did. It snapped. Up. You already get all this. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. It was only going to be just the tip, though, so no big deal. <laughs> you just had to say that. <laughs> you really wanted to make that joke, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. I was okay. like, how am I going to play that? I want to make a joke. I want to make a joke. Does your boat <laughs> have one of these on it? It doesn't look straight. Maybe. 
Maybe. I bet it does. I'm gonna blame I that on Angelo does. actually. Yeah. Well, I tried to make it straight, but he, he, me, dude? he. I think he's off balance or something. Don't worry about, like, your he's got too much inner ear fluid in his right, right side of his head. Like a full size one, like yeah, it looks good, man. Really? I mean, no, wow. That, that's it fits like perfectly. Is it made for that? For a European um, washing machine, yes. Did you get this from Lagoon? Like this um, specific model? No, we bought it. Dude, I want a washing machine. I'm just Good jealous, hockey. actually. I, I, I like to make fun of everybody Anybody that has a washing machine. makes fun of the washing machine is always yeah. jealous of the washing yeah. machine. <laughs> I mean, it's really yeah. nice to have. I'm kind of thinking about getting one. My friends Ryan and Sophie from Ryan and Sophie Sailing just installed this little tiny thing in one of their heads. I and mean, they have a pretty pretty small boat. I mean, it's like a 42 or 43 foot. Yeah, we, I didn't really get to see it. I saw it. Yeah, we helped them prep before they left here. To oh, you guys know yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Of course you would. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I oh, love those guys. They did. Uh, we do a Sundowner special, and Sophie came on our channel. <laughs> you guys have got to see it. It's the funniest video we've ever taken. Oh, really? I don't want to say anything, but she definitely messes up on shaking the drink, and it's in slow mo, <laughs> and it's like I was uh, laughing so disaster. hard editing it. Uh, it was good. You, yeah, you know, good. she doesn't eat cheese. <laughs> She's a Frenchie that doesn't eat cheese. Oh, yeah, we do know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Crystal doesn't eat cheese. I don't either. eat cheese. Oh, really? <laughs> they got along really well. In that <laughs> weirdos, bunch of weirdos. She's like, why does everybody does point cheese? that out? That I'm, I don't know. What I'm the French fuck. and I don't eat cheese. It is yeah. kind of messed I am up. French, you know. I understand something. Use the accent. <laughs> you think you know everything about cheese, but I do not like it. Yeah, she's you sound a little more Russian there, but that's cool. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> she was no really throwing. specific. About, oh, I remember now. She said it tastes like, uh, like an attic. Or something like an attic. That's how like she explained A -T -T -I -C? it. Like A T T I C. An attic. It tastes like an attic huh. to her. That's how she described it, yeah. which is so weird. So like, which mold? I guess is mold, mold. Right? It which makes moldy. sense. Yeah. All right, let's say hi to the people that are actually here because before we had like 300, now there's about 90 left. <laughs> like, oh, just man. rooting for us. <laughs> At least the diehards are here. We got the diehards. What's up, Johnny? <laughs> Victor's here. David Apps is here. What's up? Peter Emerton. Sailing wind. You're back. Dana's here. I love Dana. Dana's got a badass boat. Have you ever heard of a Dolphin 460? I actually uh, looked at a Dolphin. Yeah? I don't think it would... It might have been the 460, in fact. The problem for me was the headroom. Oh, yeah? I, it was... It well, was, that's what you get with a boat that actually sails I, a well performance for a cat. Right, you, know? yeah. you, gotta, you gotta be able to... How and, tall are you? And my knees were hitting the door when I was on the toilet, so that was... You're a tall guy, right? <laughs> like 6'1". Six 6'1". One. Six one, yeah. yeah. Awesome boat though. I Trip mean, is no here. Question. What's up, Trip? Oh, Dana's from hi from Palm Beach. Yep, Dana's from Palm Beach. Brent Brooks says it's he's in Florida. It's raining like hell. Well, get get ready for some more rain because the rest yeah. of this system after it breaks up is just gonna piss rain on yep. you guys. It's probably just gonna be all rain, not a lot of wind. Uh, oh, can see in here. Video is good. Aruba, James, Palili. I'm going back to Aruba on uh, let's see, three or four days. Oh well, I might as well just tell you guys what my plan is so I'm here um, helping my friends that bought this big lagoon they bought this lagoon and then they put on like I don't know probably 15 16 grand worth of worth of um, aluminum work to make like a diver platform and a big ladder and uh, like a compressor station of oh, fancy a, ladder yeah. dude it's crazy Oh uh, no! Oh no! Sorry, just uh, keep oh, going. we got we got the error message back. <laughs> I just I messed with it. And, that's and they don't know how to sail it. So uh, Angelo called me. And he's like, James, I'll fly you in. Uh, can can you please help us with this boat? And it's good that I came in because they were gonna go out to sea with their topping lift. Like it must have been 13 Tired, years old. Ready to go, dude. Yeah, yeah. And that's the backstay yeah. for your boat. Yeah. And their their main sheet was the same way. Their reefing lines were dock lines. Their reefing lines were dock Wait, lines, what? dude. <laughs> Uh, that like yeah. that like sixteen plate stupid dockline shit. Like yeah. whoever owned that boat before is a dick. <laughs> they just didn't do anything. Was it anything. a charter? Yeah, yeah, it was a charter uh, boat. So so, but it was a private charter boat. So really? it wasn't like a moorings boat where they actually like spring for double braid. It was like the shittiest repairs. They they put the boat in the water and then the 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 seam deck to, deck to hull seam in the very back on the transom was yeah. leaking bad. And turns out it was just like three cans of 5200 where somebody had backed in and like crushed the thing. And they were like, yeah, just fucking spray this in there. And they probably didn't want to pay for the haul out, you know, because that stuff sets underwater. Yeah. Yeah. 5200 is like the caulk of the boat world. I mean, it really does kind of just solve all problems. Yeah, we it's call it messed up. We call it fuck the next guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a good name for it. Yeah. So, uh, 
Well, I'm going back to Aruba after I'm done with helping Angelo with his boat, which we're pretty much done. Like, I, I told him, like, exactly what to do. I'm so glad I came because he didn't know to check the chafe during this storm. He didn't know to uh, about all the lines. He didn't know how to sail. He didn't know how, like, all these things that are, are almost second nature to me. Like, I'm like, how do, you, how do you not know that? But for me, I've been on boats forever. Yeah. I think I, I, I bought my first boat 16 years ago now. No kidding. Yeah. I didn't realize you were in it that long. Yeah. Okay. And this is my fifth one. Yeah, we're really, Revolution's we've only fifth. been living on our boat for two and a half years, so we're not, like, super... But, uh, the, but, but the I've, thing is, that's a whole, life, that's but, a whole different yeah, skill set. Living on a boat and yeah. then cruising on a boat. That's exactly. Yeah. Is, yeah. Dude. You get a lot more Leads hours apart. in, a lot more time, learn a lot more because we're living on it. So yeah. it's well, a little different. Shit breaks a lot more when you're living <laughs> yeah. on it, man. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. bad. It's bad living on a boat. In terms of the, the maintenance aspect of things and just being on Have top you of seen stuff, like yeah. about 10% maintenance at, like or 20% of the value, value of the boat? Honestly, I haven't kept track in a way that Only I'd be able to say for sure one way or the other. But in the beginning, we had to demast, fix the, the top of the mast because the shrouds were coming off. And then we just ended up getting all new rigging and new sails. We were like, screw it. It's about 10 years old. Whoa! That time. Yeah. That was like the, the first the three three couple right. months. We refit yes. the boat. We refit the boat. And then. But you and did the rigging and the sails too? Oh, yes. Everything. Oh my God. Everything. And then he installed lithium batteries and did there's, the solar. There's all really nothing we didn't replace. All in Florida. Yeah. But the I did it all myself. Self, yeah. Well, Which we max sales. Makes a did you do the rigging yeah, yourself too? Uh, no. no the, the rigging I did not do myself. Yeah. And Mac. I, I, I will always give those guys a shout out. They're probably the one marine company that I've in dealt Florida. with that wasn't an absolute they, nightmare. Yeah, they stand by <laughs> what they say. If something's not right, they'll come out and fix it. They don't. Yeah. They don't dick you around for prices. You like hear it that was boys, the, Max Stack Pack. Yeah, and yeah. Stuart. And not Florida. only were they not a nightmare, I mean they were actually amazing. Really easy to work with. Yeah. Tesla Tesla says, "Love your confidence, bro." Thanks, man. I, He's talking about me. Oh. <laughs> Robert Scranton says, love the swimsuit. Thanks, bro. I just actually washed this one. I think it's got a hole in the ass. Um, Graham Wheelock says, or 52 million years. Don't know what you're talking about. John Haywood says, I just came from a wedding in Aruba last week. Uh, you should have oh. stopped by and said hi. Oh, no, no, I wasn't even there. Hey, John. I know you, John. Oh, yeah, John. Yeah? Yeah, he's one of our uh, He's one of our fans. One of our fans for sure. Oh, I, we're, we're bleeding over. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want you, you want He's him back or something? Or? Yeah, John. Come back to our channel. <laughs> Hello from Sicily, Italy. Cool, man. What time is it there? It's got to be kind of late. You should go to sleep. Thank God, no nail polish. No, the only the only reason I don't have nail polish is because I, it all wore off. I actually brought nail polish. I was gonna ask you to paint my nails during this thing, but I don't really feel like it anymore. No. I mean, that could be arranged. I really I want. You know what? Nail. You know I why I don't I don't have nail polish on? It's because I can't find silver. Silver? You yeah, I want silver, silver nail polish. Yeah. Cool. I only have red. No, I want silver. <laughs> uh, my decade says 112 in Puyallup last week. Good, 112? I've never even, I mean, I lived, I grew up in Puyallup. So I'm from Puyallup, Washington. Washington, okay. And uh, it's a very small town. It's like 75,000 people. And nobody can say the, say the actual name. Are you snoring? Seriously? She's, Sorry. she's While I'm trying to do this? She, you're boring her. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It is boring. The story's boring. Okay, fine. She's part fun. Part fun. <laughs> That's so funny. I mean, it's funny we went into this talking about the importance of keeping the mood elevated. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, yeah. Your childhood yeah, it's, it's because we about. didn't make the um, the syllabus. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's so funny, dude. All right, well, let's go back to you guys. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, you don't put the pressure on me. That's my stop. Yeah. <laughs> so... So 112, so that's the temperature there? Some temperature that's in, in Puyallup. And it's a very temperate climate there, so it's the northwest. It's not, it's right near the coast, and it doesn't get very hot, doesn't get very cold. I think it rained, it snowed once like two, two inches, and all the kids were making snowmen and like throwing snowballs at each other for three days, and then it all went away. I remember that one time. And then my friends hit me like right in the eye with a snowball and I was like oh guys I hate you <laughs> I remember that very vividly I remember when Jared did that to me too a couple years oh, ago oh that's mean <laughs> that's funny that was pretty good that was pretty funny um Paulie Clark says James the new hairdo has taken 10 years off you looking fly woo thanks man mm -hmm. well, I just wanted to get it all the same length I felt like 
a crazy person. I looked like a homeless person when I put my hair up. I just could not make it work, man. Yeah, um, I'm going bald, so I really... Actually, I, I've said that once we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to just shave it. So. Oh, you're going to do that. Uh, you want to see that action. The chrome dome? <laughs> I want to see that action. But keep the beard. You look all like Viking. That's pretty yeah. cool. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that. There we go. I just gotta start doing some sit-ups, otherwise <laughs> it won't be very tight. Pro proportionally, <laughs> you look more Roman. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta grow the beard out proportionally with the amount of hair you're losing. There you go. So yeah, like, yeah. get yeah. double the so beard. I just gotta really let this. And beard. half yeah. the hair. Okay. Seriously? So, so, stop breathing. <laughs> stop breathing. <laughs> Simmer down. Okay, so uh, if you guys are just tuning in, we are on SV Two Short. It is a Leopard Forty Six. Uh, these cats have a YouTube channel. When did you start your YouTube channel? Well, yeah, we started. We started it started. a year and a half ago, but we didn't really do anything with it until um, a little bit later last year. We ran into Bo and Brandy, and they really inspired us to move forward. Um, the best channel, besides you guys, <laughs> or besides you. We love Bo and Brandy. That's like our family. But they have a smaller, like 40,000 subs, maybe. What is but, their channel called? Bo and uh, Brandy. Bo and oh, Brandy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're amazing. They are sailing around in like a 28 foot sailboat. And no shit. They yeah, they're, the doing positive, they're doing it. They're doing hardcore. Hardcore. Wow. And they, they are the most hardcore. positive you know what I, people I've ever met. I met a, a couple like that, and they said, they, it was like, it was outstanding. They said, the boat is our bedroom and the world is our living room. Yeah. Which is perfect. Like, they don't, they don't want to hang out on their boat. That's yeah, exactly they do it. a lot of adventuring, and yeah, they're like fish. They just learned how to dive, or they just got dive certified, but they're good. Um, Free Hunt, hunters, freedivers, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're so fun. Though. Do you guys spearfish? Yeah. We try. <laughs> I love spearfishing. That's Darren like my does. favorite I... Oh, I love it, too. Well, he can't That's see That's one of the close. rough parts about being here in Bon Air. You're right. super strict here. Yeah. Um, these special spear guns that they sell here for, they're like <laughs> for Bon Air spear guns, <laughs> so they don't hit, hurt the reef. So yeah. just very quick explanation on how spearfishing works. There's three different ways you can spearfish. One is called a Hawaiian sling which is a piece of wood with a hole drilled through it, and then you put the spear in it and then have a thing which, it's kind of like a swing sign. And one is called a pole spear, which you take. It's seriously. a lot like a bow and arrow. Is what yeah, yeah, like. that's kind of like, like a bow an arrow. underwater bow and arrow. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just kidding. Shot? I'm yeah. just yeah. Yeah. completely yeah. kidding. Did you really? You drugged your she dog? Was, <laughs> she was, no, well, it's she gets for tense. her. And oh, no. When it's we were in like, like, like Elsa wind. Did you drug me? <laughs> um, and the other way is a pole spear, which is a pole, like just like a fishing pole. It's like spun wound carbon or, or um, fiber. And then on the very end, you just attach a loop of uh, rubber. Then you put that loop of rubber in the crook of your hand, take the, the pole, pull it back, and then grab it. And then that rubber now provides the uh, thrust for the spear. Yeah. And because too many people were wrecking the coral with those, they made this special spear gun here that is like spring loaded. I'm not even sure what it is to tell you the truth. It has like a little a little thing and it only goes out this far and it's just for lionfish and they're serious. They're so serious about the the, the, the spear fishers killing the ocean here. And I, everywhere I go I But look at their reef. I mean, sick. there's something to be yeah. said about it. Yeah, but it's yeah. not because of the spear fishermen. I guarantee it's no, you, no, it's right. not. It's no. not because of the spear. No. There's no way it's anybody. Because they don't anchor here, and they they do. They protect everything, which is why the reefs here are like they are. I bet you. It's I'm because convinced of... it's the commercial fishing is what destroys. It's all these commercial fish fishing, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah, the regulations you that you that you set on the businesses about yeah. dumping oil. Yeah. About like the fines oh, for yeah. dumping oil here in the ocean are like. Yeah. Tens in the in the tens to hundreds of thousands. For sure. If somebody were to like run up on the coral here with their boat, oh, dude, they would yeah. lose everything. I, I was debating earlier today. <laughs> actually, I was like, man, do I like if our mooring breaks and I like can't start my engine or something? Like, do I start my engine? Walk away, man. Do, or, or do I do I like just let my boat get crushed on the shore, or do I drop my anchor and like risk oh, paying like some ridiculous fine? Dude. Like I'm actually weighing that out of my mind. I'm like, I don't know what I would. Do in that moment. If you couldn't uh, get your engine started, you're going towards the to, towards the rocks. Oh. I think because you're going to pay an environmental fee either way. I think that the anchor would do less damage than the entire boat, like the entire boat right. on the rocks, I, yeah. and then and then it's going to burst some tank somewhere. It's and then... crazy to, to to have to think about. How that about how about way. like actually having to think while you're uh, <laughs> like 
That's what I was trying to pre-think it. I wanted to pre-think yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, if it happens, yeah. I want to be at least semi-prepared mentally. Well, how screwed up is this? Somebody's thinking, like, okay, I, I'm not allowed to put the anchor down. And then their boat goes aground, and then their diesel tank ruptures, and then they cause this huge exactly. problem. Way just worse. because they, they weren't able to, like, worse. emergency put their uh, And that, that was down. kind of the conclusion I got to. Yeah. Graham says, Chris says hi. What's up, buddy? Hi, Chris. Um... John Haywood says, I use the Hawaiian sling. I like the Hawaiian sling. It's a fun yeah. one. The thing about the Hawaiian sling, a lot of the times, is the, the a spear's not attached to it. Yeah. So you just, it's got like a bow and arrow. It's like you just fire spears out. Full and those spears are really expensive. So yeah. if you're in any kind of like uh, island that's a volcano and drops off really fast, your spear is going to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Cats never sink. DRX1 says. Don't uh, ever don't say that. Those. Don't yeah. ever say that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Phil Greenhardt says, uh-oh, James is on a cat. Break out the life preservers. <laughs> Wait, what? Is this something that, I should this know, is, guys? This is, okay, we're going to go back. We're going to go up. back. I have an idea. I know. Uh, Graham you says, hello Does from San Francisco Bay. But Papa Stephen Duncan says, hey, James, got here a bit late, but I'll watch again later. You know what? I have, I guess, two live streams now because I don't... I started the first one and we lost internet. That's part of being on an island, guys. Sorry. Yeah. But uh, Phil says, uh-oh, James is on a cat. Break out the life preservers. I think I think Derek just went to get life preservers. Did he? Shit. Is uh, he doing that? Is there something we should know, James? Oh, fuck. No, I guess I have, like, a little bit, bit of bad luck about, you know, ripping boats in half and <laughs> sinking boats. Pretty much every boat I get on. What you guys don't know is I actually had a bur boat burned down. You want to hear that story? If you want to hear that story, you comment. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna just tell I it. I do know that one. I'm not gonna give it. Do you know that one? Uh, you had it online not long ago, right? Oh, no shit. Where be the old oyster? Uh, the oyster is on a very, very big. It's just for good luck. Oh, oh I have one of these too. <laughs> yeah, with also. I, I actually. That it, is the biggest. You kind rule of inspired me to buy I've that thing. Ever I think seen it is the biggest in my one life. Myself. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's gonna go in. Oh, we, but you know what I did with mine? I put next. I put <laughs> clips on it. I extended these and put little little alligator clips so I can just clip it right to the battery. Yeah, that's what she need to do. And then you know, get a hose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need another through hole. There, there, there needs to be a hose clamped onto it. <laughs> it's ideal. Otherwise, you're just recirculating. You're like, where's my hose? We Babe, where'd you put the hose? Where'd you put the hose? The the the, the boat's sinking. It'll God, like I wish you wouldn't put action, anything you know? away. Aeration in the the village would be great. It'll just sit in there and just. Darren be blaming me. Yeah, Babe. <laughs> Again, James! Go get the towel. Sorry. Oh, man! Get it was the, just a little bit. Paper towel. <laughs> he doesn't want me drinking, apparently. It's no, his second drink. I'm trying. I'm so, sorry. It's a, I tell people it's a boat. It's supposed to get wet. Paper towel! Turn! Sorry. Oh, that's true. Paper towel. Right, well, that's embarrassing. I'm like, hey guys, can I come do a live stream on your boat? They're like, yeah, come on over. And then I just immediately spill a drink all over their table and I'm like, that's sorry. Two. And that's now I just did it again. That's all right. Don't leave anything electronic, Near liquid, anything fault. around me. Say, let's not do a I'm, I'm kind of a shit show. <laughs> okay, so is the pump for filling the drinks up? <laughs> that's funny that <laughs> oh, Des just we said that. Do that. This is my buddy Des. What's up, Des? How's it going? We just need like a 55 gallon drum of rum down in the in the. Yeah, the, that that's a great yeah, that'd idea. Be awesome. Uh oh, Todd says, Todd says please let's hear it. Shane says please let's hear it. Todd says let's hear the burn story, and Dana says tell us. Okay, so my first boat. I'm gonna go way back to. Oh, okay, let's see, 2007. Hmm. It's been 16 years, so whatever that is. 21 minus 16 is five. 2005. So. It's 2005. I, I buy my first boat. It's an Islander 28, Bob Perry design. Sails like a crazy banshee. Uh, I burn up the motor on the way back from Catalina one day, and I sail that boat into Ca into Marina del Rey for like a year. I would sail out of the slip. I just raise the main and push the boom, get out, hit a couple boats, and then sail out, sail back in. And uh, at the end of that boat with me, um, I sold it to my buddy, and he was like, hey, man, can you make the engine run? And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess so. So I hire a guy that's like the guy for Atomic 4 engines. There's, there's a reason they call him Atomic. Um, gasoline powered. And he freaking, I get a call like six hours later. I leave him on my boat. I give him 250 bucks. I'm like, just just make it run. 
and uh, I get a call at work, and it's my buddy from like three docks over, and he's like, hey man, uh, your boat is on fire. And I'm like, no, no, that's not my boat. That can't be my boat. He's like, yeah, your mast is down, dude. Like, it's, uh, you gotta get back here. So I come back, I'm freaking the fuck out, because I got, like, I live on the boat at this point, and it's got all my stuff, my surfboards, my dive gear, my a gun from my pop that he he had given me, like, when I was a kid. All my family stuff, all, all the boat paperwork. And uh, turns out that he was smoking a cigarette and went to like work on the carburetor and the, the gas tank was pretty pressurized. It had no vent on it. And, uh, it had a vent, but he just didn't open it. And it got all over him. And then he burst into flames. Somebody had to like grab him and throw him in the marina. Yeah, and I, I mean, he had like... You ever seen RoboCop? Remember RoboCop 1 where the guy falls in the acid and he's like, yeah. he's got the skin hanging down? He had that. And I felt so bad and I'm like, bro, if I can do anything, he's like, I'm going to sue you for all the medical bills and the cost of uh, the boat and punitive damages. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You just burned my home down and you're going to... Anyway, we won't go into that, but... I didn't want to sue him because I probably could have, but he had a he was a single guy on a boat with a nine year old daughter. And what am I gonna do? Like take his boat and take his home and like make his daughter go to a fucking uh, no, yeah. a home or something. Right. So I, I ended up an orphanage. That's it. A home is for home. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I didn't sue him, and I ended up losing like maybe thirty grand because I had to pay for the dock. I had to pay for the boat next to it. That burned the boat next to me. The mast, not only did it burn the boat next to me uh, on the leeward side, but the mast fell on the windward side and, and, like, crushed the spreader of that boat. It was, it was, a, it was horrible. And that was my first introduction to boating. And pretty much since then, it's been the same thing. Thank you, sir. I don't know why I'm giving you another drink. I know. Is, no, I, I'll just hold it. Really. Actually, it's not my drink I'm, I'm, I'm It's always mine, so down. I need to hold <laughs> my drink because... All right, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to anyone else who's having a drink with us. I haven't had, like, a decent rum punch in a while. I've been oh, is rum punch? mostly drinking vodka. And it's warm in true Sailor Fest. Well, I like that. It's, it's good. Warm. It's kind of okay. That's a crazy story, James. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's that's, that's shitty, right? It's kind of intense. Yeah. yeah. But, I, I mean, I feel like I handled it well. I paid the money. I ended up paying cash for everything. Like, Doc Fix, my boat. Paid my buddy back because he had given me the money for the boat already. Um... Tried, tried to work it through the insurance, didn't work because I had canceled the insurance when my buddy paid for the boat, so it was like a month lapsed. It's like so you totally take. Oh man, I took it up the thing. ass. Yeah, man. yeah. and oh, pretty much have been taking it up the ass ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with TMI, every dude, TMI. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I cut my hair <laughs> and paint your nails. <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta go there? Uh, um. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the bilge pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing so, wrong. speaking of crazy boat disasters, crazy happen. Yeah. yeah. Tell me a boat story. Tell me a boat story. Okay. Yeah. So our our craziest story Ooh. happened in New England. Uh, we were up there uh, way too late in the season. I don't remember what month it was. I mean, but yeah, we we were way late in the season. We were up in uh, like the Rhode Island area. And a nor'easter came through. November. It's November, yeah. So, so was, the, wait, the cold. nor'easters, they have southerly winds? Is that right? Or they have northerly winds? Dude, we were in the eye of this freaking thing. Well, oh. the whole thing it is was, It gets like gnarly up there. It was a yes. hurricane, dude. It's like a hurricane force wind that spins out of, like, like you, you don't, can't track it like we do in Florida or the Caribbean. It just comes out of a small storm and the whips up like a tornado within a couple hours. Whoa. Yeah, so that's so what they it call was, It was before I, I really know started... They existed looking at weather <laughs> patterns and understanding it i was way too trusting of just windy and like what the wind direction yeah, was going to be yeah. Up there. now you now i look at it and i'm like oh yeah that that could be a total 180 change in wind direction you're like, you look yeah. at windy you're like wrong yeah <laughs> or at least at least it could be wrong right like you you learn to zoom out if you don't zoom out on windy it's not a very useful tool lesson well learned said, on this well one yeah, i mean that's important so so yeah, uh, it it, uh, it 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 was a lot worse than what uh, Wendy said it was going to be. We were a little prepared. We had crew on board at the time. Yeah, and I mean we had and a we, ton of scope up, out. Yeah, but you set up a storm anchor. Yeah, we had to an, throw I, off we, just in case. Thank God. And we were only expecting sixty knots. Because it well, gets there. what you were expecting sixty, 60 knots. Yeah. And you only had one anchor out. Yes. 
Well, I you know I so there's there's a debate about putting there. secondary anchors out because you can yeah. end up tangled and fouled up if wind directions change. So I, and I didn't expect the wind direction to change, but I mean coincidentally, you know, Got we it. ended up spinning around 180. And if I did have a second anchor out, it probably would have ended up fouled and it would have been So look, if you ever so. ever ever put a second anchor out, always give it more than like if you can do 45 but it changed that would be, 180 degrees. That's okay, degrees. because this turns into, like, just one cross if it's 180. If you're doing circles, then it's a problem. Yeah, but you're not going to yeah. foul the anchor like yeah, that. Yeah. But, yeah, sure. you're, but you're you're protecting your ass. There's no dude. question about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so the wind ended up going up to 80. And so, yeah. of course, the anchor, we thought we lost the anchor, but the anchor ended up just lifting. And we yeah, just I thought straight. it broke yeah, yeah, free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so you were fast. just, like, just sailing. The anchor, yeah, the anchor backwards, was planing. Yeah. Yes. Sailing anchor. It wasn't anchor. And so, yeah, yeah. our crew... That would be funny. Wow, that actually is very hydrodynamic. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> oh, oh, man, cool. it was insane. So I crawled to the bow with our crew, uh, the guy, like and... Literally crawled? Literally crawled. Yeah. In 80 knots of wind. Yes. Dude, it, and so, it was just crashing down. I just remember looking over and I was like, look at my face. We crawled and we dumped the secondary anchor over. We got ourselves stable. And just like that, just as fast as it came up, it stopped. It was... Yeah. Because we were in the eye. We were in the eye. We, we were in the eye. And, and it wasn't, and it wasn't as there. bad when, when we got to the other eye wall. It was it's fine. not nearly as bad. It was, like, so fast. But I literally, like, I actually, we were pretty noobs then. Newbie sailors. I thought we were going to die. I was like, we're going to die. This but I it. definitely <laughs> remember the oh shit moment looking down at yeah. the helm and seeing the, the, the wind, <laughs> like, 80 or 90 knots. The, the wind really indicator just goes, kaboom! Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Like one of those Acme <laughs> cartoons. It just breaks oh. the glass. And it was dark. It was pitch black. It always happens in the middle of the night. Always, at like always in the middle of the night. Yeah. So I had like Sammy, no stop. bearing. So I was kind. Of, there was a couple of lights on shore, and that's all I was using for my reference to try to keep the bow in some kind of consistent heading. Ugh, yeah, it was crazy. That was crazy. Bummer, dude. Um, but it made us stronger sailors. <laughs> Yeah. Because now I was like, what, 30, 40 knots? I ain't shit. If you guys don't know, the <laughs> when the when the wind picks up about, past about 45 knots, it starts to pick up the sea. And it starts to, we call it sea smoke. And Sammy, it's awesome. just blasting you with seawater. Yeah. It's the worst thing. Yeah. You can't see shit. Nope. It's, it makes it difficult to do anything. Yeah, you don't know if the rain is coming from up no. or down. It doesn't matter yeah, at that it's point. Just, it's just wet. like, you're wet. It's almost like a vertigo situation. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, when I say crawl, it's because obviously we're like clipped into the jack lines or the you know the safety lines. So instead of you can't walk at that point, you're just slamming down. So yeah, I crawled to the front. We can't see anything. Found the anchor. <laughs> pushed it off. So, Good for you. Yeah, I yeah, remember the, the one. This one vivid memory I have of it is it was in a, like a big Tupperware thing, like a big oh, yeah. plastic the, crate. The extra and I just remember too. when all that wine came out of it. That thing just like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, no, I God, looked to it, it went over and, all, like, and then I look up at Darren, he, and this is the middle of the night, he's in his PJ pants, yeah. like, no shirt, it's like Freezing. 50 degrees out, and he's like just manhandling the boat trying to keep it in the wind, I was like, oh, oh my God. And it did stick, the, the secondary anchor stuck, it yeah, was a Dan Fortress, fortress. Yes. big Fortress Dan yeah. Yeah, Dan Fortress secondary, yeah. that's what you need, man. Yeah. With that's a decent amount thing. of chain it on it. stopped us, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right before we hit another boat behind us, it stopped wow. us. The only other boat in the anchorage, of course, was right there. Do you know which one it is? FX 23, 37? <sighs> I think it's at 37. It's, hey, it's, it's, a, it's up yeah. there. It's a, yeah. big, it's a big, big one. Well, that's why I needed help. I brought that other the guy, Gary, that we had. Thank God. A lot of people there. keep those on the back of their boats. Their, their fortress makes these like little racks that you can that you can. I put actually have that rack. I've been ocean. thinking about where I want to put it, but do you want to put it on the side? Do you want to put it on the front? Do you want to put it on the back? Is it's it one is more it, is it collapsed in, in the is it collapsed in no, the locker? No, no, oh. I have it put together. Screw that. Yeah. What good is a secondary anchor if it's not put together? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, let me get let me out figure out how these fucking know. fifteen parts go together in eighty <laughs> knots of wind. Yeah. Like, I don't care how many <laughs> times you put it together. There's no way that you no. built it. Yeah. I, I bought it secondhand and it came in the bag all neatly packed and I'm like, wow. this is absolutely useless. Yeah. <laughs> like this, like no one well, would Well, you know, you could, what you could do is like, if you got six days notice that a hurricane was coming, your own hurricane mooring. Yeah, for sure. Well, right. By the way, there's a really good book about that. Um, it's called Anchoring the uh, Multi-Hull Cruisers. Oh, yeah? It, and it's written kind of like a four-year-old <laughs> Like, the guy's not a writer, but he's got really good information. So what he... And put him out juxtaposed like... And put him out juxtaposed like a peace sign. And then yes. as, as far as I, the, as far as the chain will go. Yeah. Yeah. And then 
put like a ring or, or a shackle or just connect them all together. Yeah, a ring is the best. You kind of just go in any direction. A ring, uh, like a ring of metal would be the best. Like shackle to a ring, shackle to a ring, shackle to a ring, and then you shackle to the ring too. And then now you can kind of move around yeah. with all of them. You really don't. And so there's no like real tugging. There's no, yeah. it's kind of a constant force. And, and there's always like, yes, there's always so like a, a yeah. dispersion of, yeah. of the force. The load, yeah. the load, yeah. Uh, looks like we're not getting really good internet, so sorry guys. I'm surprised there's so many viewers here. <laughs> What's the max wind you can sail in, Shane O'Donnell says. <laughs> guys? Depends on your boat, I guess. I, uh, I mean, we've comfortably sailed in... Actually, uh, I would... 35? No, we've comfortably sailed in 45, I think, was the max that we yeah. really did it. I mean, we were fully reefed, like, really, really reefed. Well, it depends on the, the angle of the sail, too. Obviously. Your point of sail is yeah, definitely really important. important. At a certain point, as soon as it hits like 45 knots, there is no angle of sail anymore. You're running with the fucking wind. Yeah. No, we were actually, we managed to point. Uh, that was apparent, though. On this boat? That was apparent. Yeah, so that was probably, uh, true wind was probably 35 knots. Okay. Yeah, so we were, but we were making, uh, I'd say we probably sailing about you were 45 trying to, degrees. You were, you were trying to go upwind? Yeah. I, I was just that testing it out. Yeah, there's we were, no way that was above 45 knots, though. I've done was, that. No, 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 no. 30. I said true wind was probably 30. 35. Okay. I said in our parent okay, wind. Okay, 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 got it, yeah. Because we were, yeah. we were hauling ass. And, and but you're doing the 10 state, knots upwind. The key was the sea state was perfect. Ah. Uh, I mean, well, we that makes a huge difference. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, to anybody around. who's gonna get it's into awesome. sailing, I mean, your sea state is, sea state is a really huge important. factor. Yeah. We were in uh, what channel was that? When we the did Bahamas. that, Eleuthera. Yeah. Eleuthera, yeah. yeah. So it was a very so protected. I, I kind You're of in the lee of this huge yeah, island. Yeah, I'm in the lee yes. of that Sweet. island. I was really close to shore, it's so it was, it was it was a great opportunity yeah. to kind of test Actually, it's kind of like that here. If you guys ever really good spot, I mean, whatever you hear about the ABC islands, all of the lees of these islands are. Bad yeah, ass. Like, like this is yeah. really good sailing. Aruba is awesome. Is it? Dude, the best sailing ever. Because Wait. because the island's situated almost perfectly north north to south, so the trades come over the island. Okay. And you get like beam reaches, you can and there's no wind there's no waves at all huh. because there's a sloping uh, uh, coral reef coming out. So I'm happy you said that because we're actually running a contest right now. Contests or what to call it, where you can apply to sail with us in Aruba, and even yeah. though we haven't done it yet. What? Yep. Yeah. How do I get in? <laughs> I want to go. But, but you're always welcome. We have to welcome people that watch us and that oh. and never get a chance so to sail. So I'm not cool enough. I can't do it. You have your own boat. You don't qualify. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we were asking for a video, like a uh, short vlog, saying why you want to sail with us. But you could also just do an email to us at sv 2 short at gmail.com we are accepting anyone who wants to come and you don't have to know how to sail we can show you whatever you it's don't have to know how to good dive. if you do it's good if you do know how to <laughs> sail but it's not it's not going to determine what makes you win we're probably going to put it out there and let people tell us who to choose but if you want to come sailing with us it's going on right now by okay. the way <laughs> okay so we're going to answer some questions from the audience now uh, one of the things they said was, we kept losing our internet, and I'm sorry, we're on an island. Yeah. I I'm sorry. That's that's kind of what we have to deal with right now. Uh, did the winds calm down over there? I'm here in Bonaire, and it's been rough. Been very rough. We're in Bonaire too, and it's rough. Yeah. yeah, it's calming down right now, actually. It's starting to shift. It's been the most lazy hurricane ever. I don't know, man. It depends on where you're at. I've heard that the uh, Upper Antilles got kind of rocked by it. Oh, really? Todd Cutler says, sorry, got to run. Thanks, guys. Great talk. Keep it going. Will do. Graham Wilcox says, I was on land in Antigua for Hugo yeah. in Florida for Martha. Maybe a couple more used to boarding up windows. Yeah. Hugo was a bad one. Yeah. In spirit of that, we are actually uh, drinking some very fine <laughs> Antigua. Antigua rum. Yeah. Uh, one of... One of my favorites, quite honestly. It's really but, um, good. So that's a good one. one. Yeah. It's kind of peaty. So uh, what's Shane O'Donnell said, what's the max wind you can sail in? You can sail in up, up to like 45 knots. True, true wind. And by true wind, what we mean is the wind speed is 45, but if you're going downwind and you're going 10 knots, now the wind feels like 35, so that's apparently 35 knots of wind. If you're going upwind at 10 knots against the wind, now the wind feels like it's 55 knots in your face. So that's apparent wind. 
But true wind, honestly, on a, on a cat, I've only been able to sail in anything except downwind in 45 knots. Yeah. We, you can back. sail, though. Yeah. I mean, we got hit by 60 knots when we were crossing the equator one time. Dude, you should have seen the front. It was <laughs> fucking crazy. I was looking at a 60. black wall of, of, like, a line of black that went from horizon to horizon. I'm like... Holy shit, <laughs> babe, get the sails down. And it, by the time we like yeah, you thought sailing, about getting you the sails down, it just hit us like boom. <laughs> it was crazy. We went from we went from doing five knots to the north to doing 16 knots to the west. Yeah, west. Just sliding. Yeah. I always have to do the never eat sour wheat, never eat soggy waffle thing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you do you like in instinctively know which way? Yes, I do. Was? I definitely instinctively. Fuck, I do not. Yeah, I'm no directionally. I, I've nothing. been gifted no. at that. I, I remember when I was a kid. I know actually. which way it is. I just don't know how to tell other people. So I'm like, never eat soggy. Well, yes, west this way. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this weird thing when I was in the the car. Pirate tips. When I was in the car as a kid, I would close my eyes and try to sense which way we were going and i would just try to feel it out i, I was always serious i think i've got like a bird compass in my brain what or something like for real like, really it, yeah that's kind of really, cool it, it was a weird thing that i remember i'm gonna try that next time yeah and try it, to keep your sense of bearing i think that may be puke i get i get car sick isn't that yeah. crazy i don't get seasick really? i get violently motion sick in cars I, if i'm in the back i can't even ride in the back of cars huh. i'm kidding yeah, yeah and they're weird that's yeah that's really <laughs> weird to get car sick not but not, kidding. not seasick that's yeah. weird I've gotten seasick four times. You want to? You guys want to hear that story? <laughs> in my life, I mean, I've got 16 years on sailboats and five years in the Navy on on submarines. So I've got like 20 years, oh, like cool. half my life has been on boats. So four times I've been sick. Once was on the sub, and we lost propulsion at 400 feet. And then you know the ground effect with planes. You know, like like there's a cushion of air that's called the ground effect that. When planes come down to land, they always like put their flaps oh, up. Oh, I was gonna say, I understand ground effect then, when it applies to airplanes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's the same thing underwater. Babe. Oh. Did it break? Yes. No. It only broke the top off. We're good. Oh. Jared, <laughs> don't let the dog get it. The cork, the cork is still intact. The bottle is good. Rum's Everything good. is just fine. But I would don't, let dog. Don't, don't let him eat it. Don't let him eat it. They're eating it. They're eating it. Your dogs are eating the, the rum bottle. Yes, he is. Not He's got it in his mouth. He's not eating it. Sammy might eat it. Sammy would. He wouldn't. He's, so he's the, the same ground effect that, that works too. for planes actually nice. works for subs, too. Uh, where if you lose propulsion, uh, su submarines always want to be like a little bit positively buoyant. So if you lose propulsion, it will go up, and then that ground effect will suck you up. So it was a, I, I think it was a hurricane. I'm not really sure what was going on because I didn't have the weather, with weather data. Like, we don't have weather data on a sub. We get... Anyway, that's way too much story. So... <laughs> That's really we, interesting. We, we go up, yeah. and we're bobbing on the surface, and anytime a sub is on the surface, they have to man the bridge. So now we're taking, like, 45-degree rolls, which is way worse than we're doing now, and oh, everybody, yeah. everybody, on like, shit's coming out. My my friend got hit by this big fucking uh, yeah, cause if you're not case moving, of, you've got of, no stabilization. of technical yeah. manuals that probably weighed, like, oh. 150 oh, pounds. God. Dude, he, was, he had a concussion. Uh, anyway. I just watched The Smarter Every Day one on the subs and he was talking about how they have those manuals in in the head they oh had, the guy that was the nasa guy that's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. a the youtube channel and he had yeah rocket engineer i guy. saw that yeah. episode he had, actually he, i don't even watch like YouTube. a that's huge funny. stack of, of manuals that were in did the he head, did so he yeah. actually like open them because no, they are the most ridiculous sure. technical manuals i have ever yeah. seen in my life I've and there's it. no google there's no buddy you can call. That's right. You just have to figure out like how these are going to be deciphered. I mean, and that's why we carry manuals on our boats, it's, too. It's a skill. I, we it's keep skill. our manuals. Yeah, that's good. a weird I've thing. Like, no, I, I do that, too. I anything. never did. Yeah. I, I don't even read the manuals, but <laughs> there is going to come a time where you need that's this. That's right. I've written... Yeah. Written manuals? Not, yeah, yeah, I've written some stuff in like IT world, like how to, how to stuff. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'd like, to, real detailed. <laughs> I'd like to how write to, a technical <laughs> manual one day, but just have it be so... Like I mean, a Dr. Not. Seuss of technical manuals. Yeah. You gotta put like, those little... <laughs> just a big pictorial... Tip diagram. one. Yeah. Grab a pen. That's follow, how detailed follow you have to be. Lot. You have to just assume... Why, the aren't, why are they all black and white? Why can't they be other colors? Yeah. Seriously. If they were, like, multicolored, it would be so much easier. I mean, I do colored. 
I do. I do colored. I Rock was, on, babe. They were like, Me do too. whatever you want. Like, it was for the software at the company. So, anyway, back to the story. Anyway, I'm I'm, it's it, it's rocking. We're, <laughs> we're, we're up in the... The funny thing is we're all nerds. So, we're up in the <laughs> submarine, and we have to man the bridge, and everybody starts puking. And I'm on a tube oh. of metal, right? Oh, it's a recycled air system on that boat. Uh, oh, and yeah. the smell whole boat is stinking like puke. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm fine. I don't give a shit. Like I don't what? get seasick. And then I'm like smelling so everybody's smell puke. It. People are like puking right in front of me. You know, <laughs> like I'm on watch and people are like doing their thing, and then <laughs> and then doing their thing. And I can smell it. And it's like it's like I can smell NASA last night's dinner, but like in half digested form. Yeah. And so I start getting sick. And then one of the most violently ill times of my life was that. Oh, you had no yeah. choice in that. I mean, everyone's puking yeah, around you. It's fucked up. It was brutal. Done. It was like it's 16 hours experiment. of this, too. Oh. Oh. It's like, what, what would happen if you just set off like a stink bomb in this boat with 20 people and closed everything? You would all lose I, a I lot missed, of weight. What made you lose power to begin with? Uh, I think they did a reactor scram and... and fucked it up and they you know they were like oh sorry guys we just lost the propulsion because it's a steam engine it's a nuclear yeah, yeah, nuclear yeah. plant but they make steam so if they do a scram on the on the reactor and something little thing goes wrong then the reactor just stops oh, it has and then now no steam, steam now oh, no man. no uh uh drops pro the rods propulsion and boom, game exactly over for a while. and the the um the shaft on that thing is 14 feet so it takes a lot of power to get that thing moving, yeah. right? Yeah, and the the prop your, on that thing. Oh, sorry, I'm not done talking yet. We're getting nerdy, people. So the Come on, the prop, it, the prop on a sub is like <laughs> ultra top secret information. Yeah, if yeah, they go no, into no, the dry dock, they have like to like cover it up. Or, yeah. What it is though, it's so sick. It's like <laughs> seven blades that go up and out like this and they curve too it's like a curvature going up and out and it's like seven it's like an octopus arm so it's like crazy looking five thing dimensional it's so sick dude propeller. and it's cast bronze <laughs> the whole thing is like one piece of bronze yeah oh yeah i'm sure i think what, it's what i think they told me it's like seven and a half million, million dollars that go through? I can't even imagine or that. maybe they just like pour it like the old <laughs> the old sailors in the sand <laughs> Oh, yeah, right, right. Right. That's definitely how they do it. That's right. not how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so you just sick. get like some Navy guys, some little dudes. Like, yeah. yeah, we just dig this hole. I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one guy that really knows what he's doing. <laughs> There's always one guy. He's like, <laughs> the old guy. He's like, no, you did it wrong. Yeah. Imagine every, right every, <laughs> every movie. It's always one guy. Were you Navy? No. No, I was in Naval ROTC, though. Uh, so okay, like, you like, know about yeah, the Master Chief. Yeah, cool. Okay, well. That's one story. I'll tell you guys the rest of them later on. <laughs> you have so many stories. <sighs> Inge says, hi from Norway. Man, I want to That's sail your cool. country. I want to go to Norway. I sold my boat in 1989, Hurricane Hugo. John, you sold your boat during the hurricane? Or I don't really understand the reference there. Hugo was a lot after. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got it. Yeah, after Hugo, the house got changed. And much investment to keep. Man. Hugo like messed up everything, huh? Hugo was a big one, yeah. That was horrible. Nick Madrid, what's up? Much love from NorCal Gold Country. My wife and I and our two Frenchies are looking for our forever boat and yeah. traveling. I uh, hope to sail alongside you soon. Well, I can tell you, if you got two Frenchies and you're a couple. The Leopard 46 is actually comes equipped <laughs> with... <laughs> a front yard that the dogs can pull oh, and pee on. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You don't I, use your... No, trampoline no, is yeah. a dog's... It's like their backyard, right? It's like the backyard. Yeah, there's no lounging on the front there's yard. Like, there's, like, little... there's like pieces well, of mean, doggy poo unless, everywhere. Unless, that is, uh, unless you that's wash gross. it down. That's not the there, place yeah. for uh, hanging out for yeah. them, but yeah. Oh, somebody knows I make cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> yes, pa so... Paul Schappen says, I was Navy. Well, yeah. Me too, buddy. Thanks, shipmate. I like smarter every day. Yes. Yep. James, where is your crew? Um, the crew is back in Aruba, and I'm getting new crew. You guys are going to like her. She's Colombian. She doesn't speak English, but um, I'm going to teach her. And I'll, I, I will, I will. you know what? It's going to make it such a bitch to have the YouTube channel because I'm going to have to t do subtitles for all of our interactions. So oh, it's going to be so That's a lot of work. But, oh. but she knows, like, basic English. So I don't think it'll take her long to. Muy poquito. Yeah, I told, I told her you have three jobs on the boat. You need to cook, you need to teach me Spanish for an hour a day, and 
I forget what the last one was. Something. Oh, you need to film. You need to film. You need to learn how to film. That, yeah, that's, that's, make cocktails. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, four jobs. I have be, ten jobs. It would be awesome <laughs> to have somebody who could do yeah. like videography stuff. Sooth says, yeah. what happened to the black girl? I just explained that. That's, that's, uh, the, the black girl is named Wait, Steph. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> a little no, racist she, there. Cute no, girl. she's black. Oh, she's, come on. Let's she's, real she's now. a little black hottie. I love her. She's, she's <laughs> such a cutie. She's the desktop screensaver on my computer. Come on. It's yeah. a nice screensaver, by the way, guys. Um, James, <laughs> what crew do you have with you now in Bonaire? Wow, you guys. I am on somebody else's boat right now. I'm on a lag lagoon. Uh, He's our 500. crew. I don't know what you guys are talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's fun. I mean, I don't really like lagoons, but I, I, I'm basically what I'm doing is helping a friend. He's not paying me anything. He's just paying for my food and uh, not, my not flights us. and somebody stuff. Somebody else. This is a leopard. Yeah. Just yeah. To be clear. These guys know how to sail. This guy. Um, They're really nice. Super, super, super nice. sweet people. Yeah. Uh, them. Angelo and Andrea, if you're watching this, love you. But. Yeah don't know how to sail so i'm teaching them how to sail and it was smart of him it was very smart of him to, to spend the money on me being there because this boat is an ex-charter boat it was completely messed up man every yeah. single piece of running rigging was the wrong kind the wrong length and old as shit so i don't know if you guys know this but like on a on a modern rig for a cat is much different than, than a monohull boat what they do is instead of taking lines that hold the mast up everywhere, they do a diamond rig that comes down to either from the fractional or the top of the rig to halfway and then again. But basically where I'm getting at is the, the backs stay. It, there is no back stay because cats are driven by their mainsail. So you, you, you choose a big roachy mainsail. By roach, I mean if you dry a triangle of the sail, anything outside the triangle is called the roach. So if you see a sail that kind of goes up, you know, straight and has a big huge head on it and then goes into the mast that's a huge roachy sail it's, it's called it's why the square top mains are a big thing yeah. with catamarans because they're trying to get as much power are, out of that main yeah. as they can yeah, yeah. you're explaining yeah, it really well like, yeah it's good. No, i'm just saying like the square top main yeah. is like a little it is a thing yeah, yeah. It creates even and more roach. I've never so, heard it explained that way that's so actually, the, yeah. the cats get clear. power yeah. and basically most of the sailing power comes from the main and then yeah. the pointing ability comes from the jib yep. so if you want to have like a lot of monohull boats you'll see them sailing with just the jib and that doesn't work on a catamaran because they don't get a lot of power that way they just get their pointing ability it just makes them go a little higher into the wind yeah. and if you're ever sailing on a catamaran and it's like ripping wind having the jib furled up with this little poaches champ of of sail is the most horrible way to sail what you want is a little tiny mainsail so like a tri sail is important on a cat uh, or maybe some kind of furling boom mainsail, or I wouldn't say mass furling. I don't really like mass furling. I I hate the idea of any kind of furling situation for a main, just because yeah. of the. Yeah. I mean, a but you a, lose a your fourth batons, reef, a fourth reef. A lot would be of nice. the time you lose your battens yeah. in that yeah. situation, which yep. loses you oh. yep. a lot of stiffness. Or yeah. instead of yeah. losing your battens, you just shade. like rip the shit out of the sail because every time you tip, and, pull it in and yeah, take it yeah, out, it, it like rips the batten pockets out. And there's it, they get messed up. And if you yeah. can't get your sail down that's bad i mean that's yeah. that's a worst case scenario so that's horrible, yeah. robert scranton says so where are you guys going if a hurricane comes your way well we're here well no yeah. because we don't want hurricanes yeah we're in the uh the hurricane free zone supposedly but yes the hurricane went north of us and still <laughs> managed to whip us around but yeah yeah uh, I, shit, it's a lot I better know. than being in the west. hurricane you there, just go west there is so west and south right south southwest yeah, the only the only place you can go is right west of here is the Bay yeah. of Panama. So you can go That's down into the do. bay yeah. into Columbia, Columbia. And, then and then you're never gonna get hit by a hurricane, but you're definitely gonna get hit by lightning. <laughs> so that sucks. Um, Tammy says, "Hey, good to see ya." What's up, Tammy? Melvin says, "You look good with short hair." Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. that. Oregon waving to you all from Drew. And hello from Tahiti, from Sean. Oh, man, I miss Tahiti, dude. I want to go back to the Pacific so Never bad. Been. I have been. friends in the Pacific right now that I met in the Pacific when I was there, and they got stuck there for, for COVID. Stuck in French Polynesia on their sailboat. You were there on leisure? or I know, with my boat, with my, last, with, with my last boat. Oh, cool. Dude, it is one of the most amazing places. So to the 213 people here right now, if you can hear me, my next plan... My like, master plan is to build a house in Makatea. 
Makatea is 130 miles from Tahiti. It's one of the only raised atolls on the world. So it's like a cliff overlooking the ocean. I've talked to the mayor of the town. He, he said that I can do a 99 year, le year lease there uh, with his permission. So basically what I'm gonna do is give him like 30 grand for a, awesome. for a little tiny piece of property for 99 year lease, and then use my sailboat to shuttle everything, all the building materials, because it's a fucking uh, uh, volcano, man. It drops off so fast, there's three moorings there, and that's it, you cannot anchor there. That's crazy. Cannot. And I think it's gonna be so good, it's gonna be so fun, and like, you know, it's, it'll, be, it'll be a learning experience for me, because I've never built so anything like that. Amazing. And cool for the YouTube yeah. channel, right? Yeah. It's and a good opportunity for you to learn how to do that. It's right? amazing. Yeah. And I can do the wiring, and that. I can do, like, tile. And I can do... Tile. Like, put in a bathroom. But I, I've never, like, tile, built... Tile, no tile, tile. Built a house. Oh, yeah, is God. it oh, marble tile. or marble only? It's no, an oyster, like, obviously. It's all wood. Oh, it dries <laughs> out your hands. Like, dude, oh, I hate that. Wood. Oh, all wood. Yeah. I, can make I, was, it like handy, a, I was a handyman. I did handyman work. Did you? That was my first thing, actually. I started... I've actually never really had... <laughs> no shit. Yeah, I've always had my own businesses. No so way. Awesome. I never really yeah. worked for anybody. I had a handyman company, well, so I had to do You worked for a bowling alley for like a second. Bowling alley? Bowling so what you're saying what is... What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, my... Kava Bar. <laughs> Kava Bar, that. bowling alley. Where do you... You what? told me that. that you worked my for wife a... doesn't even know my own history. It's messed up. Kava Bar. You worked for Kava Bar. <laughs> yeah, I did. I've worked in a Kava Bar. Oh, oh, don't know your own history. That's, the, that's oh, as I close do. as I've gotten to this. Episode. Kava? You mean like the dirt? Kava. Yeah. Yeah. Kava. Um, yeah. Hyper root? That nasty stuff. That dirt? It's dirt. I, I worked in a Kava Bar. It's it was like actually one of the first... I think it was the first Kava Bar in the United States. In Florida? Yeah, in yeah, Florida. Florida. Yeah, I'm did pretty sure. Did you have long hair? Were you a hippie? No, I wasn't. Wait, do, do you guys want to see James play the ukulele? <laughs> no. The ukulele is out of tune and I can't tune the uke, sorry. Do you have a guitar? I would. I, I, I can do, tune that. but I just want to warn you it's nylon strings, classical. Oh, Don't yeah. Fuck it up. I would love that, please. I, boop. You gonna get my guitar? I'll get it. Oh, it's time to play a song. You'll get it? Alright. We're gonna play you guys. I will a song absolutely not it. screw it up. Okay. It's a little, it's, it's more sentimental value, but. I have a 40 year old guitar, it's a guild. D55, I love that guitar. It's my favorite. Oh, have you been to, um, there's a brewery called Sugar Thief? No. The guy has... Here? Yes, and the guy that owns it has the most amazing steel guitar. Steel? Yes, the whole thing is steel. Oh, wow, that is a nice guitar. We are, oh, yeah, I mean, it's thin body, obviously. But we're going to take you to Sugar Thief. You would love it. Smell well, it's that kind wood. of in... Is it close? Wow. Are you, like, putting clothes in there or something? <laughs> no. What's in it? Nothing at all? Nothing at all. How old is it? Very old. That is a beautiful guitar. Old, I've had it uh, since I was a kid. Oh, yes, harmonics. That's how I tune. Do you want to tune it? It's close enough. Way bigger deck than I'm used to, you know. Like mine is a like three quarters this size. Yeah. Are you pretty good on the guitar? Used to be. It's nice. Oh my god. <laughs> nice! I love it. Yeah. It's beautiful. You want to play us something? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> cool, dude. Not online. Do it for you guys later. Sorry. Fred Christie says, hey guys from Indonesia. Gotta go make dinner, guys. John Haywood, nice to meet you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, tell them about the holes everywhere on the island. Oh, the holes? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, so the island, okay, so 
I have to like Which do a, a little bit, a little about? bit of history. Here? No, in Makatea, where I want to build the ah, house. Ah, okay. So the, what he's talking about, the holes everywhere on the island, is uh, it's a raised atoll. So an atoll is made from a volcano that right. was worn away over a million years, and like yeah. the only thing left is the ring of coral around it. And, and sometimes there's varying levels of sand inside that coral ring. And then sometimes the waves come in and they like and dig, the they dig a, a washout where you can get your boat in. Well, this one, and there's only like five or six in the world, it's called a raised atoll. So it's, there's some kind of vol volcanic activity that makes that whole thing lift a cliff around the whole island. And in the, the, in the, the middle used to be the lagoon. So it's all coral inside, now dead coral. And there's a lot of phosphorus in that coral from bird shit and whatever. So they were mining phosphorus. And when they mined the phosphorus, they would like, I don't think that people did this by hand, dude. And it looks like the surface likely, of the freaking yeah. moon. Anything it, that goes on in places like that is typically done. I've, mostly I've, I've got dr I've got drone footage of it, and it's sick. It's like twenty foot holes, about six feet in diameter, everywhere. Like not not everywhere, but like sixty years of people doing this. It's everywhere. It looks like the surface of the moon. It's crazy. Interesting. But well, that's in the in the center of the island, and the rest of the island is really cool. And it has a natural freshwater cave in it. So you can go free dive this cave and go into this little hole and then it opens up into this cavern and then as soon as you get down past like 35 feet it starts to turn into brackish water and then it and then it's salt water because all the fresh water is like just sitting on the top of the salt water so what are they like drilling holes like trying to find like a vein no 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 the the um the phosphorus is part of the rock so they drill and they just take all the rock and then they they crush it all and they just filter out i don't know how they filter it but so versus just digging a big hole i guess they just found a way that's more efficient to just drill a long hole versus i mean nowadays they would just use a machine and just like take chunks yeah, of rock go, okay. but this is like hand done man. crazy yeah and they stopped it now and they wanted to do it on yeah, another probably because they would have just got rid of the entire island eventually right i mean yeah. i mean they f they screw that island up bad yeah. it's huge i mean these holes are huge i flew the drone into the hole Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, big, so big holes. Yeah, holes. all okay. by hand. Now I'm getting it. All right. Yeah, I was picturing like. And it's kind of a magical place. Right. They have this like glowing rock. Some of the rock is just glowing there, so you can find this glowing rock at night and just chip it out. They have, they have. Uh, it's one of the last glowing. places. Glowing. Like, yeah, glowing. Like it fucking glows in the dark. And uh, they have. It's one of the last places that they have uh, coconut crabs. Like, like everywhere. Is it tritium? Like what is? Yeah, glowing? I don't know. It could. I Right. They are now, and this place has them everywhere because there's only a, a few hundred people that live on the island, and there's not enough people. There's a huge island, so they haven't eaten all the coconut crabs like everywhere else. And these things are big, bro. Yeah, they're, like, they're, I mean, like, and, and they're so strong. They're so strong. Yeah, they if you've got your finger caught shit. in in the, in the coconut <laughs> crab, the thing scary. is, they're really slow. So like, you could probably pull it out in time if you if you, oh, really? if you okay. felt them no. pinching down. They're not like crazy fast. But if, if they got a hold of you, that your finger would be off. They are so strong. They have to bind them. So when they sell them, they have this big abdomen, which is actually their stomach. Like their ass is their stomach. And they have to like put all their legs and hands together like this and bind them with reeds from the tree. They have, there's like a special of the bandanas tree that they get the binding from. And I have, and they can live like that for like a week and they, they ex export them and it's crazy. Anyway, cool place. Okay, so I think... Hey, sailing Ukiyo! Two short and zingar together. We'll see you on our Hudson 50 before you know it. Yes! <laughs> Love it! I actually really like that boat. I have a buddy with that boat. Uh, he was named, I think, Three of Cups. He was a, like a, like a, it was a religious reference, but he was the refrigeration guy. So if you go on a cruiser's forum and look up Three of Cups, you'll, you'll find a damn metric ton of posts from this guy. And he's got a Hudson Force 50, and that is uh, uh, a guy you need to look up. Okay, so, John and Tina miss you. Oh, Tammy, okay, everybody, sailing plans. Do you have any any plan, anybody? Nobody knows where you're going to start sailing, dude. We're going west. I mean, we're going west. So we, don't, we don't know exactly. I don't know. I don't, think, I don't know if we're going to cross in the canal, but I know we're going just still west. you got to come over here because the mic's over here. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. we're we're trying to to figure out exactly. I, so, you know what? COVID sucks for sailing. Right. You know how much it co it, it cost me to check into oh, Aruba? Oh God, it's annoying. They wanted nine hundred, well, eight hundred and seventy dollars. 
To check Seriously? into Aruba? For three people to check into Aruba. Eight hundred and seven dollars in a while, so I didn't. Uh, yeah, but but here's the it thing. It is ridiculous. There was a two hundred and fifty five dollar fee from the marina, so we just picked a different marina. It cost five hundred. But still, five hundred. I can't even count I how many times we've done COVID tests at this point. Yeah, well, it's yeah. been pretty yeah. ridiculous. It sucks. We're probably at about. Did you travel? Yeah. Yeah. And even if you're vaccinated now, doesn't even matter. There's no vaccination rule here with no, like a uh, vaccination passport. It sucks. Traveling well, sucks right now. Ask yeah. too short if he prefers Kristen. Control 4 or AMX? Control 4, he's a Control 4 dealer. I, you know... But what do you prefer, babe? It's what good. are you talking about? It's an interesting question. What uh, is this? Yeah, so, yeah, so... <laughs> super technical question. Hold on, let me finish. Our, <laughs> our sailing plan, our sailing plan, uh, is, we I have to get know. hauled out. And, and hauling out in this region of the world is pretty limited when you're on a catamaran. Your beam dictates where you're going to go. Where you're going to go, yeah. It's a major factor in where you, where you can actually get hauled out. Uh, so Curacao was going to be the place we were going to go, but then we heard it was under new management. And I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I actually haven't talked to you about that. I'm just curious. I would like go to Aruba, man. If, if you want to haul out and you yeah, want to so like, stay there for a while, I, uh, I would say Aruba. I'm gonna go we were Columbia. thinking about Colombia. We were looking Oh, Colombia would be great, too. too. Yeah. yeah, so... They have, like, hotels on the I site. love Colombia. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. I've been looking into it, and a lot of people are pointing us to Colombia right at this moment because there's... Obviously, things change with COVID and management changes, and I guess reputations change, but everything that I'm reading is pushing us to Colombia, so that's what we're going to do. Yeah. It depends on what you want. You just yeah. want bottom paint and a buffer. And but you never yeah. know what you... Well, you can do that anywhere. It's, it's what you want yeah, and what you need. I, I don't know. Dogs. What, where I'll give you the skinny. Let's... I'll give you the skinny. Curacao takes a month to get anything there, but yeah. great facilities, great mechanics, great welders, great... Mm -hmm. Like, anything like you need from a uh, 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 technical. technical standpoint yeah, or a labor. fabrication, labor standpoint, yeah. great. Uh, not the cheapest labor, though. Cartagena, cheap labor. Fairly easy to get everything, like a lot easier than Curacao. Uh, very cheap to eat, very cheap to be there, very safe in the marinas, mm -hmm. very dirty water, so it makes your hull like really nasty. Um, yeah. Very great nightlife, if, I mean, this was pre-corona. Yeah. Panama. Oh. Super easy to get everything We're also married, so in the married. middle of nowhere. Like, y there's only three places to go in Panama. Either the San Blas, Escuta de Veragua, or Bocas. And the place that you're going to haul out is not near any of those, man. <laughs> it's like, it's like the, yeah. it's like, I also, if you live right next to the freeway and there's like an a, a industrial district next to you, that's where you're at in Panama. I don't want to go there and do it because I feel like that's going to be a, a that's kind of like where everybody hangs out. That's where all the, the fun go is going to dive. happen, right? Like, yeah. well, I, do they go there to dive? They do. Yeah, they, I, do. they do, yeah. But it's also kind of like where everybody kind of meets at the end, right? I feel like that's the case. <laughs> the is that the case? Yeah, yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah. Like the half end. the people no, don't no, go no, anywhere. Like a morbid way. It, it yeah. sounds like you've been watching some movies. <laughs> it is. No, no. Everybody's like afraid to go through the canal. This is the problem with Panama. It's like right in the in the funnel yeah. of the Caribbean, and then everybody's afraid to go to the Pacific because they don't trust their boat enough or have the skills <laughs> or, to like say, okay, I'm gonna make a 30 day passage that's now. A, that's a serious commitment. Yeah. We were talking about just not judgment, no judgment. I don't it's know. I sell too short, uh, but I would. Put oh, on I'd the say hall, this boat. Go over there and rent a boat. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not worried. You want some crew? Let's do it. <laughs> Game on. For <laughs> well, Who wants to crew with us across? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to put my dogs through that, honestly. I don't know. What? They have their own yard. But yeah, come on. That's I, not the issue I, at all. But I have the best mother in law. Love you, Debbie. Please take our dogs. <laughs> Wow. All right, hold on. Let me go back to the the, the automation question real we quick. Just the, go I'm gonna away. answer that question you know real fast. Control four dogs. is the direction I would go, only because it's open source. There. And uh, there is something to be said about they open can. source and third party integration. And if you don't allow third party integration, you're going that route of of Apple. And I feel like Apple is doomed to fail because they are so centrist in the way they operate their business. They they will allow nobody to come in and no communicate source. with their stuff. Right? So, yeah. I mean, maybe they're, Apple's either going to take over the world, and they're going to win, and, and you will have won on that bet, or Apple will lose at some point, and it's because they didn't allow third-party integration. 
so I like the idea of open source, and I like I like the idea of other people coming in and being able to competitive to be yeah, competitive th- and, and make and drive things. Not just competitive, it's but allowing part, it's for part of it, though. It, it's important, but it, allowing technology companies and individuals to to develop things that are you know very tailored to a very specific niche is is a cool thing about control for it so they've made all these drivers and the stuff like ridiculous high-tech stuff where you can integrate some technology that you never would have thought you could have yeah (laughs) i I, thank you for asking that question that was fun and i'm done (laughs) have you ever read the book the circle the circle yeah Sound, I feel like I saw a movie. No, no, Circle. way different, <laughs> dude. The movie sucks. The book is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I read it like three times. It was great. Right on. All it's right. about well, basically Facebook out. taking over the world. Ah, yeah, yeah. And no, he reads he reads books about like the universe and how it formed and like well, that's really cool. super nerdy stuff. Super, really, super nerd. Sorry, babe, to call you. I feel you like there's some judgment there. <laughs> I I, right. No, like I, I, don't I love. I, this is my husband. I love him. I love that he knows stuff that I don't know. And, like we can teach each other, or whatever. But yeah, no. His what kind book, of books do you like? Go. Let's go look at our book collection. Yes. <laughs> his is like quantum physics, and then he tried to explain that to me, and I was like, oh, you're hurting my brain. <laughs> it's like very. Uh, so what are your books? You can't read. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he would marry a girl that can't read and knows nothing. Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that book was awful. <laughs> that book was awful. So that's not a book. That's a technical manual. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, because the virgin's just going to deep throw it right away. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, you already know what you're doing. That's so stupid. I hate that book. That is not real life. Okay. Oh my god, uh, I'm drinking too much. Goodbye. <laughs> Graham Wilcox says, Good year. How is the glass where she was built? Uh, I think she was talking about your, your cat, maybe? The glass? Hey, it's a good question. I'm not really sure, quite honestly. But I mean, leopards do get... They're, they're made in South Africa. So they get a pretty decent reputation in terms of their manufacturing. Yeah. And so, they all come over on their own keels, right? Yeah, they all, they all come over. That's sailor lingo, if you ever and heard And this one. is an older boat. This is a 20 My boat came over on its own keel. Yeah. <laughs> and then Darren took it off underwater. <laughs> yeah. The keel? Well, yeah. We have sacrificial, sacrificial keels. keels. And if you, you want to see that, it's like episode, keel? Took the keel yes, off underwater. In episode three, in the very beginning yep. of our YouTube, I have actually actually videoed it. and it the is fuck, dude? Insane. Seriously, why? Insane. Because I wanted to be able to repair it without being hauled out. Oh, we, we so ran I was able to, Wait, you didn't even need grounds. to repair it? You just wanted no, no, to take no, no, it out? No, no, no. Oh, dude, I... We ran oh. We didn't run... Oh. It took off a yeah, chunk of our... Ground. Oh, you stupid <laughs> asshole. No, just kidding. I'm done. I did that like yeah, four months yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know that. <laughs> Anyone who says they haven't, like, they have for yeah, you. They're no, either me. lying or they haven't been around. Yeah, you haven't sailed. Everyone does. Actually, that's how I anchor now. I just like... As soon as the keel hits, I like that's where I need to drop my anchor. I'm not even kidding. That's nailed it. it. <laughs> Oysters. I got a seven it. foot keel, dude. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Like, I don't even know how to deal with that. Dude, that, yeah, the guy. That's the only way I can. I'm like, oh, that's where I need to stop. You know what's really funny? When I pulled into Aruba, I ran aground hard, and then I spent like an hour and a half getting two anchors and like my fortress and my and my CQR in there and like I'm walking them out underwater and I finally get it off and get to the thing and I'm like hey I'm ready to check in and then the coast guard shows up they're like we're here to help <laughs> and there's 18 of them they're like well we're gonna have to search your boat now and Ew, don't yeah, need your yeah, help. it was sucked, it sucked. <laughs> they're just trying I'm to glad they didn't try to find me or anything <laughs> yeah still getting used to the oyster keel seven foot yeah. keel I had a one foot keel on my last boat no Three foot keel, three. I was gonna say one yeah. foot. So that that was, like I was, I was thinking meter, meter, meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A meter, yeah. Yeah, we're four and a half. Four and a half feet, feet. yeah. Four and a half feet. Meter and, and a half. It's still ran aground. <laughs> so bad. Did it, like, what happened? Like, like, we were, no, we were no. in the keys, uh, and we John were going Penny to camp. a John Penny camp. I mean, it is a super narrow cut uh, through coral. Coral. Yeah, it's a super narrow cut through coral bed, and we were passing another boat that was coming in, and. I was too courteous. <laughs> that's that. I mean, that's what it comes down to. I was too yeah. courteous. To sure, like, just, 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 just like, yeah, no, you got to do on your you own. You know what? Now practice with buoys. Like, get as close as you yeah. can <laughs> to those bastards. Yeah. You'll never be. I, I mean, I got again. no. Like now, I 
that would never happen now. But yeah. you know, that we was really we new. were three or four months in. Yeah, me Maybe, too. Right? Me too. Yeah. I almost yeah. lost my boat. Yeah. yeah I, I ran. Like I, I, I woke up. I had daggerboards in my boat. I woke up and I heard the daggerboards break off both oh of them. Oh my god! And you never sail with both of them down. That's stupid. So I had both of them down, and <laughs> I remember like falling asleep at the wheel and waking up, and I was like, <laughs> and I was. I knew exactly. <laughs> we're here. My, my heart just sank. I was like, oh, oh, no way. I just. That was oh it. I mean, it, yeah, we. I mean, it was crazy because it. We hit. And it turned the whole boat, like the whole boat turned, and then there's like all the debris floating up behind the boat. I, I like, grabbed oh some god. of it. Oh god! <laughs> like, what you want to put it back? Uh -oh. Yes, no, <laughs> get that, get that. It's part of our no, boat. No, and then, you know it's a good thing. So we needed, we didn't know anything about the boat, and I needed to know what it was made of. And at the time, I was like, Does that go through your mind? You're like, yeah. hey, I want to check out the core material. Yeah, it ended up being foam core, and like, I don't know. I just grabbed it because I was like, Darren, look at what you did. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to save it for hey, later. Jared, look what you did. That's save you it for say. save it for the next fight. As <laughs> soon as he's a dick, you can be like, I don't know what it was. Yes, I was uh -huh. like, Jared, uh -huh. what did you do, Captain? That's so funny, dude. <laughs> I don't know why I grabbed it. James, don't put me on the spot. I just saw it. I was like, I gotta have that. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. I'm an awful wife. You know no. That, that actually taught us how to put our shit back together. Oh, yeah. So you had to, like, take the keel off. The whole thing? We did it underwater because we didn't want to do it on, on the on the hard because it's more days and all that. And it's really expensive in Florida. So we took it off underwater. By the, the whole way, keel. Sorry. Whole keel. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's back up. Did, did the boat not, like... No. No, I, I emailed Robertson and Kane, the makers of our boat, and they said... Because I said, technically, can I take this off underwater? Because I see in the, the <coughs> diagram that it's on just, like, bolts. It's not... It's an artificial keel. And they're like, yes, the, technically you can, but we advise you <laughs> get hauled out. She was, she was really, like, wanted all this confirmation. But like, they gave us a There's no diagram. way. I mean, if it's a sacrificial keel, like, I could just take this off. There's yeah. no way. And then he goes that around and be, takes out the C-Complex around the whole thing. And yeah, then it took me three tanks. So I was probably it was probably like three and a half hours. I mean, I was sucking through air. We had what did you shower, use? Like uh, like one of those like um, pastry scrapers where you ice <laughs> ice the cake <laughs> yeah, or something? Kind of, yeah, 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 dude. Kind of it was like it's yeah, a yeah. little. It was a hook, like a hook, like a hook tool that was intended specifically yeah. for removing like uh, uh, adhesive caulks and stuff like. Oh, that. Oh, from teak decks. And maybe it was, yeah, it was, it was like a, a roof and a really nice thing. It has like yeah, a handle like, with a wire. Yeah, that that's the it. hook that you use to recall t Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So it, it was that tool. That's I used smart. that along with uh, just a flatted screwdriver and uh, and a razor yeah. blade. <laughs> that combination of tools was the key. That, that's what made it work. I'm just gonna put this out there, but when I did the video editing, <laughs> I think we should probably yeah. cut this section probably. out just for the resale of your boat. Dude, dude, what are you talking about? No, <laughs> no. We have the approval from Robertson King. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we did it right. It was. No, sure. and we repaired yeah. no, it. no, like. There's uh, nothing. No. Water it's it's in just a stud. No, it's just a no. stud that hangs underneath the boat. It was a good thing we did it because we ended up having to change a bolt out that was all messed up anyway. Like we, we obviously hauled out after that. Cause yeah, we, we hauled to, out to reinstall it. To reinstall you had it because you have to. to the whole thing to was seal it all up and dry it. The whole thing was that I got to, to repair and and redo all of the fiberglass work before we got to in a you know, relaxed fashion. I didn't have to rush it because I wasn't paying to be sitting on the hard and we were comfortable. We were living on our boat. So why so. did you have to take it off underwater? I don't get it. Because we didn't have to get hauled out. It was that much less time. But then you had, had to, to get hauled out to, oh, I that get it. So it had the time. Yeah. Well, Substantially get... reduced the yeah, time on the hard. Okay. And I got In some... fact, and you, I was shocked with how Amazing. well the boat sailed with only one keel. Yeah. We oh, to, maybe we you should take them the off. With one keel. Yeah, yeah. Turns out it sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, this boat will sell. This great is like on episode two or three on just one tack. I uh, it, it well, sailed already on both tacks. Just, it was just the but back yeah, chunk. obviously the yeah, the, the, the lure on a the the tack where the intact keel. <laughs> that sounds complicated. Hey, on the tack gave you where the intact keel what was lured was definitely the what best. Is hey, what's, what is my sundowner? This is Ukiyo. Crystal, what's your sundowner? Live, uh, baby. It's actually a rum, rum, punch, rum punch that Darren made, but I kept it away from James because he kept yeah. knocking it. He, I noticed that. There is no thing here. <laughs> Where's my drink, <laughs> Number, Oh, I, I knocked it over. Sorry. He probably, he probably knocked it over. On your dog. No, he's drunk. 
So yeah. do you yeah, hear that, guys? Down. If you are a uh, Robertson & Kane owner, the uh, crew from SV SV2 Short re recommends that you remove a keel. Absolutely. Uh, preferably the port or the starboard, sir. Uh, ours was starboard. Oh, yeah, starboard keel. Go ahead and take that off anytime. Yeah, yeah that's approval from Rep Robertson and Kane. Weight reduction. Um, if anybody. 46. <laughs> no, actually, do you know the, the crazy thing that I was thinking to myself was like, is this thing going to sink or is this thing going to float? I didn't know. Like, was it possible? Yeah, like, like that's what I would say, too. Like, I wasn't sure. I mean, am I going to have to pull it down? Super positively buoyant. Wait, so no, I had to pry no, no, no. it down off the bottom watch of the Watch the video. With, it's with like, uh, yeah. I got to watch this. Find out whose face it flies at. <laughs> oh, so it's like a surfboard. As soon as you got it down, I was like, yeah, yes. I videoed the whole thing, oh, and you'll no. be happy to know it's to the Super Mario Brother underwater song. <laughs> <laughs> because that's all I can think. Oh, wait. <laughs> ba -na 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 -na. That no, one? No, no, that's no, the uh, that's castle one. Oh, that's the underwater <laughs> ground <laughs> one. No, 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 that's not it. All right, somebody, what? What's oh, the man. Mario you Brothers underwater scene? Up, I had it. Oh, you did. It was on tap until you two started oh, spouting shit out. Oh, God. No! Forget it. It's over. It's done. There's no chance. Of it. There's no chance. <laughs> oh, That's my shit. favorite one, though. So now you have to go watch it to find out what's going on. Thank song. you, guys. Sailing your Kyo. You guys are sweet. <laughs> All right, Parlay is already shopping in the Barbados for his next pro his next project, dude. Like I saw a video last week of him like putting in some serious bulkheads in his boat. I tell you, at least he's sorry. Whoa. Whoa, we're moving, peeps. All right, I guess this maybe the storm did a U-turn. Oh man, we're like facing boat. Well, no, we're all facing. Nah, side. it's. I think what's happening is the wind is actually shifting, and now we're getting more beam on to the uh, yeah. to the swell. Okay, well, I think we might want to call it a day. It's been an hour and 20 minutes on this live stream, and the last <laughs> one went for another 20. So yeah. this is officially the longest live stream I've ever done. We did an hour and 45 minutes on did our you first really? live stream. Did you yeah. really? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> way to outdo me, bro. <laughs> this, somebody, is, this is way more technical. Some, some, somebody so somebody told me, like, you got to stop it at an hour. As no. soon as the energy goes away, no one's going to watch it anymore. I... I feel like obviously, it's yeah, true. Yeah, we've been maintaining good viewership. I, our energy is high, right, guys? I mean, we've been doing good. I think so. Yeah. It's like you guys are here with us. We had some nerdiness. We had some drunkenness. We had. Yeah. Yeah. It's we've beautiful. been uh, doing yeah. the full gamut. Okay, sure. at that, we'll take one more question from Mike Walsh. Yo, James, I want to sail around the world, but have never been on a sailboat. What's like top things that I need to know do before being a deckhand? I'm 24 from Massachusetts. Well, you're already near the water, my friend, so you got that going for you. Yeah, that's a one -off. Um, Top things that you need to know and do <clears throat> before being a deckhand. Well, terminology would help, I think. Kind of wow. Right? I think sure. that you should go on to find a crew. That's F I N D A C C R E W. Findacrew.com and try to find a, uh, a gig on a boat that just needs hands that don't have any sailing experience. Because the number one thing that you need to sail is experience on the water. There's no amount of books sure. or uh, like watching YouTube videos that is gonna prepare you for actually what you need to know. Because what I film, I mean, I wish that I had a camera on me all the time, but I just don't, is about 10% of what it actually takes to you know, like no okay we're not gonna die or what do we need to do here or now this line is gonna chafe through or what, what would you guys say i mean experience what, is definitely a big thing what, but what before, he's saying like what does mike what does mike it? need to know before he i i think your first instinct was actually really really on, on least, point the uh, communication and, well, and yeah. knowing the terminology really basic stuff it's pretty important to be able to if you don't know port from starboard you need to do that at least before you apply like super basic stern bow like there's people that we come that we have friends that come on board that don't know anything about what we're saying at all and it just well, yeah but it, it i mean and, and more technical than that if you're going to be a deckhand like you need to know like hey, sailor you need to know certain go grab the the port sheet whatever like you need to just be able to read chip sheet furling line you what know people are what saying they're trying and to go tell and get you. it real quick so you, 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 you can get that from That's books i read a lot of books yeah when yeah, i when did, i was dreaming about sailing on even on my sailboat i read all kinds of books yeah. And that's where I got a lot of that kind of folk knowledge about. Wow. That's important. The um, vernacular for 
Sailing? Just go, ro- go watch Captain Ron. <laughs> don't, don't watch Captain Ron. It's going to happen. <laughs> watch Captain Ron. <laughs> you need to watch Captain Ron. Uh, everyone sure needs to watch Captain Ron. Very valuable. Yeah. Teach you some, some... He does. They go through terms in there, but... No, don't don't drive like Captain Ron. So don't my... get lost like Captain Ron. But... Read some books. Books are, yeah. And YouTube videos. Get on a boat. Go join a sailing club. There's sailing clubs everywhere, especially everywhere. in Massachusetts. Oh, you guys yeah. are you guys are a sailing huge sailing community. Yeah. So, get on a little boat and and go sailing, man. And that would really help with the vocabulary. Yeah. Also. Uh, uh, race teams always need people, and just be prepared for the captain to yell at you for not doing it right, because that's never what they do. do it right. <laughs> yeah. Never. Um, vocabulary. That's right, CR. Thanks. Binocular is like the derogatory way to say vocabulary. <laughs> it's like for the proletariat. <laughs> <laughs> Mike says that's what I figured guys thank you so much uh, can I talk to you on like Instagram or something yes uh, I'm sailing underscore Zingaro and these guys are sailing too short yeah. T-O-O sort of like the hip hop guy but we no. don't do hip hop though you don't do the, the dollar sign <laughs> yeah, we don't do the dollar sign no bling. that's the difference no bling, I thought just... you looked like him a little I know I do I do resemble him slightly got that just got five that feet look. taller it's cool <laughs> okay Love you guys. I'm signing off now. I gotta go eat. I'm hungry. Eat Much drink. love. Thank you for tuning in. This is amazing. Um, these guys are amazing. Please go check them out. It's sailing too short. T O O short. And uh, yeah, follow them. Good, good peeps. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>